Hello everyone, um, welcome to the VideoCoin Network June 2019 update. As you see, we have a quite a unique setup here for a live stream demo. First of all, we're live streaming this with a live planet camera, and you can see one of the live planet cameras um, in your field of view, and that is being streamed by another live planet camera that you cannot see, obviously, because the camera is streaming the video. And we also have um, on this screen here, we're showing the output from one of the Live Planet cameras, how it looks in 360. So you can see in live stream um, uh, the camera control interface and what the camera is saying. So this is like a video podcast that uh, you might not have seen anywhere before because we're trying something new with a um, 360 degree live stream uh, video podcast. So, so we're super excited to have all of you guys here watching this demo for us. Today is a very exciting day for us for many reasons. Uh, one of it is because we're trying a new uh, podcast experience and also there's a lot of updates we want to take you through uh, with the VideoCoin network. Um, so let me just, on my sc the screen to the left um, is a presentation I'm going to run you guys through. On the screen to the right is um, is the interface of our camera, you know, and we'll switch that to something even more uh, interesting in just a bit. Um, so for today's agenda, um, we have a lot of things to cover. So I'm just gonna start off with a very, very brief introduction of what VideoCoin Network is, who it is for, uh, why we're building it, and, and take it from there. So VideoCoin is for video infrastructure consumers. So, um, those people who want to encode, store, and deploy video, VideoCoin is built for them. Uh, examples of VideoCoin uh, consumers can be developers who are presently using AWS or Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure to build their video encoding pipeline. Or there could be media engineers who are trying to set up their own apps, like let's say you are a media engineer, you want to build something like a YouTube, uh, you could use VideoCoin network um, to build your app on top of. So there's a lot more information about uh, what our network is, what we do, and why, and um, a lot of context on our website and on our medium, which um, you should go take a look at, and then also interact with us through our Telegram channels and other social channels. That's a super high level overview of what VideoCoin is. Um, what is VideoCoin, who is VideoCoin useful for? So like, what VideoCoin is built for uh, people who can build and consume video infrastructure. VideoCoin itself is useful for 80% of all internet traffic. Um, the reason is 80% of all internet traffic is video, and uh, all of this video can be, um, is before it gets to the internet, it goes through some sort of video processing or the other. And all of that video processing happens on a video infrastructure pipeline, um, like VideoCoin. So, VideoCoin network is where video infrastructure processing happens. And um, this is, so VideoCoin network itself is useful for 82% of the internet. From there, I'm gonna go a little bit deep into our present day progress. Um, you cannot see uh, much on the screen here, unfortunately. Uh, but um, let me take you through early on where we are at. Um, so we've built a lot of the video client infrastructure and um, over, over, the, um, over the many months of development that we've done on this, um, and we've, we've demoed each and every one of these parts in, uh, in different various stages. Um, but overall, as of now, um, the video client architecture is as follows. So like the uh, video client itself, um, uh, video client itself is the ERC20 token right now. Uh, which lives on the Ethereum mainnet. From there, um, the VideoCoin token itself can be directly used on the uh, VideoCoin native blockchain uh, with a direct ERC20 bridge. Um, there is no exchange that happens between, there's no token swaps, there's uh, no token swaps required between an ERC20 and a native token on the VideoCoin uh, network because we have an uh, ERC20 bridge that automatically changes, um, that automatically makes a ERC20 token function as if it's a native token. On top of it, we have built a lot of key man management services, like key management, account management, payments, um, and everything that, um, that uh, uh, a publisher would need to access a network like the VideoCoin network or a video infrastructure network. 
Below that, we have a scalable blockchain interface layer. So we have demonstrated this in the past. We've called it Symphony Layer. Uh, Symphony Layer is our scalable interface into the video fund blockchain. Uh, it provides REST, RPC, WebSocket, HTTP, and all other types of interfaces on top of the blockchain layer. Um, and this blockchain layer um, is, um, is, is, is running in, in such a way that it can scale with the load that is thrown at it. So if you have a few hundred requests coming at it every minute, or a few hundred thousand requests coming at it every minute, it is bid to scale up and deal with it at the same time. Below that is our uh, Ethereum-based um, GoVideoCoin client. So the GoVideoCoin client is our Ethereum blockchain layer. So Ethereum-based blockchain layer. So like we've covered um, a lot of the modifications that we've done to the Ethereum blockchain um, uh, in, in some of our Medium posts and previous uh, videos. But in general, um, GoVideoCoin is a fork of GoEth. Um, and then on top of it, we're, we're building um, VideoCon protocol and the protocol changes that is required for our blockchain layer. So presently, we have our blockchain layer running like that. And on top of that, we have the VideoCon protocol. So the VideoCon protocol, again, is something that we've gone in depth in uh, one of our previous videos. But it is a solidity-based protocol layer that interacts with, um, with, interacts with clients and consumers, verifiers, workers, and all actors in the VideoCon network um, interact with each other using the protocol layer. And below the protocol layer, there is the encode layer. And this is, um, this is the layer where all of the encoding um, and encoding and storing and distribution happens on, on the network. So we'll get into the encode layer in just a bit. Uh, so, but this is the overall network in, in uh, video file network infrastructure. And the encode layer is talks directly to the blockchain layer using our Symphony interface. And within the encode layer, there are two main actors. Um, actually, four main actors, um, a stream manager, a scheduler, a transcoder, and a verifier. So in this case, I've spe specifically called it out as a transcoder. But a transcoder is basically a worker. It can, can do transcoding. It can do, uh, it can do any, any sorts of video operations that needs to be done on the, uh, on the inputs. So the four, four main types of actors, stream. Um, so the stream manager, when it gets a request um, uh, to start a new stream, what it does, it, it schedules a new stream. And the way it schedules it, it finds within the network, it finds a worker that is willing to take the work of that stream, assigns it to the worker, and the worker starts doing the transcoding on top of it. Um, and once the transcoding is done, um, uh, the transcoder or the worker feeds the stream into um, our CDN, and a verifier performs the transcode verification work. Um, basically, a verifier's job is to make sure the worker is doing submitting proof of transcoding properly, and the proof of transcoding is verified and submitted into the blockchain. So, like I said, we've spent a lot of time building VideoCoin tech. Uh, we have uh, we have a long um, strategy around our open source methodologies, but like internally, we have over 80 GitHub repositories um, covering all of the all of the um, architecture parts that I just now uh, spoke about. We have the scalable blockchain layer that we've built out, um, and within the scalable blockchain layer, in our um, in our um, pre-production environments. Uh, we've mined over 2.5 million blocks. So, like over the over the span of time that we have run the network, we have um, written over 2.5 million blocks. Uh, we've transcoded thousands of hours of videos, and um, all of it is again in our pre-production environments, um, and uh, through our automated testing and through our uh, automated inputs. Um, but you know, like we've we've done a lot of work and um, done a lot of streaming through our existing platform. And also, we've done a lot of breakthrough achievements in the technology itself. So like one of the most recent breakthrough achievements we announced was um, on-chain proof of transcoding using ZK Snark. So that one uh, is, we've gone in depth on it in our uh, Medium blog post. We even have a video demo there. Uh, you can see uh, how the whole on-chain proof of transcoding uh, works. And this is really important for our project and an amazing breakthrough because as you saw in our architecture, presently we have um, a, a verifier node that runs, uh, which 
picks up proof of transcoding and then runs um, uh, and, and runs challenge computation to make sure that the proof of transcoding that was submitted is was um, was 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 verifiably right. Now, what that does is it's, it is um, it, it's built on top of an Oracle type architecture where this proof of transcoding is verified off blockchain because verifying proof, proof of transcode on the blockchain is extremely um, IO throughput in intensive and it's not even possible because the verifier node would need um, the source videos and the transcoded videos and then there's no way for um, for us to do it in a scalable way on, on chain. So the biggest breakthrough that we announced in a, a couple of weeks back was um, our way of uh, using verifiable compu computations uh, to pre-compute a proof, uh, to pre-compute a challenge, and verify the challenges um, on blockchain uh, using zk snarks and elliptic curve key pairing. So that's uh, that's we're super excited about that one. So we've announced that one. You can take a look at it on our medium. But today, the main reason why we wanted to do this demo and show you guys everything was um, something we're really excited about. So. Um, Let's let's cue up a drum roll, Jason. Do we have a drum roll? <laughs> Here we go. All right. So today we're announcing our uh, publisher studio. So a publisher studio is our managed front end to the VideoCoin network. Um, basically, it it's going to be um, accessible at studio.videocoin.network, um, where you can go and sign up for access and then um, and then start using it. Um, and today's we're going to be taking you all through a full demo of the publisher studio, how it works. Uh, we in fact have a Raspberry Pi here in the corner. I don't think you guys can see it, uh, but we'll be uh, streaming live from a Raspberry Pi into the VideoCoin network and then showing you the output and then um, showing you the HLS, um, how the live stream works from RTMP to HLS. So before we go into the demo and everything, I'd like to just take a minute to explain why we're doing this. Um, during our March demos, um, uh, so we did send out a huge update during uh, our March email update mailing where uh, the VideoCoin uh, Development Association laid out their thinking around um, why um, we are moving from a pure VideoCoin based payments to a tokenized fiat based payment model. Um, so the deck goes in depth about all of these things, and then also we have an explainer video that covers it in depth, um, and uh, you can check out our website for more information. But at a top level, imagine you're a content publisher. Um, you are, you know, you're working in a Fortune 500 company, and then you're approached by VideoCoin Network saying that, hey, we have this um, uh, blockchain-powered VideoCoin Network, and then do you want to stream on our platform? Uh, and then let's say they say yes. Um, just imagine the number of steps that they have to go through. Step number one is they have to acquire VideoCoin. So how do they acquire it? Um, the traditional ways is they have to go and you know acquire it from third parties or like third party exchanges or or any of the uh, um, uh, ways in which standard utility tokens have been acquired. So like let's say the way you acquire Ethereum, uh, the way you acquire Ethereum to write a DApp on the Ethereum network. Um, after you do that, uh, you need to load it, set up your crypto, set up your account, set up your you know load the uh, um, take all, take the accounts, set up the APIs, um, and make sure that you have enough funds in your account, which is you know in in, in some uh, uh, crypto format or the other. And also, and all this while, make sure that the value of the um, the, uh, the the price you paid for the tokens to put it inside the. Uh, um, basically, you need to make sure that there was no volatility, right? Like let's say uh, if the if the utility of the token is varying. Um, along with the market price, then let's say you, you, you were able to stream one hour of video today at, um, at one video coin, and tomorrow uh, you wake up and then uh, you can only stream uh, one tenth of that um, amount of video due for the same amount of uh, video coins. It is extremely difficult for content publishers to, do, um, to build any reliable business around uh, an infrastructure that is powered by a volatile coin. Um, so a lot of this thinking has been covered by um, uh, in depth on videocoin.io, but in general, it's extremely hard if we let co uh, Fortune 500 companies and content publishers know that the only way for them to access um, the videocoin network is through complex 
cryptocurrency transactions. So, which is why we built the VideoCoin network um, studio. And the publisher studio largely abstracts out all of these complexities that a, a third party publisher has to access the network. Um, so we'll be showing you a live demo with the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna switch this screen into the Raspberry Pi now and then um, take you through a demo. Let me do that now. Yeah, the first thing you'll see is on the on, on my on the screen to my left, uh, you see the studio.videocoin.network um, page, which is our publisher studio. So this is a full-on abstraction of um, uh, and an easy way to access the Videocoin network. So it starts off with presenting you with a friendly login screen. So I'm going to log in with my account, and I'm welcomed by um, Videocoin getting started page, which presents me with. Um, live stream pipelines, uh, my wallet account, and my account details. So in this case, you know, like it's showing me that I have like 27,000 or so VideoCoin tokens. But the way I would start is um, I'd come to my VideoCoin wallet. Um, there's a deposit field here. Um, I could make withdrawals, um, manage my wallet here. But this wallet account and address is generated for me uh, by the managed service. So like I did not have to go and create a new account, I don't have to go get that approved or do any of the complexities that is required uh, before I can start streaming or working with the video content network. What I do next is, um, so I think in, 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 in previous videos we had shown you how uh, video content publisher studio works and on, on as a on, as an electron app that we had made available for download a few weeks back, um, like a few months back. And then also a few weeks back we made our video coin uh, command line interface public um, where you could download it as an open source project and then access the video coin um, network through command line commands and then configuring and accessing your wallets through that. Um, so that was one way to do it. Uh, but here we are abstracting out all of those complexities and then you can just go click on um, a new live stream. You know, give the live stream a name. I'll call this the Okay, so I'm gonna call it a Raspberry Pi demo. Um, I'm gonna select an input format here. So like I know I'm gonna be streaming um, from the Raspberry Pi camera. So like the Raspberry Pi is here and it has a camera set up on it. And I'll be streaming from the Raspberry Pi um, uh, using an RTMP protocol uh, from the stream coming out of the camera. So here I'm gonna select RTMP in and I'm gonna set the output as HLS. Um, and uh, we're working on um, an extremely uh, interesting tool for um, setting up your input-output pipelines. So that is another uh, that is material for another demo another day. But as of now, our HLS support is, um, we support three different profiles. Um, you can click on one of the profiles. And in this case, I'm just gonna, for this demo, I'm gonna do a SD profile demo. Um, and then I'm gonna hit create pipeline. Um, and just like that, a pipeline is created for us. So now, um, it has, the interface that you saw has abstracted out all of the complexities that um, is involved in accessing the VideoCon network. So it went ahead and created an ingest URL for us. Um, this is the um, RTMP ingest URL. The way RTMP works is it's a push protocol. So you need to push RTMP streams into a into a into a URL location. Um, so that was previously done by um, making command line calls into the video file network and creating um, an RTMP ingest point. But here, you know, we have abstracted out all of those. You have the RTMP ingest point readily available, and um, the output stream is also readily available. So um, what is happening here is the ingest point and the exit points have been defined. So like, you can take this exit point um, and use this and, and point it to your CDN of choice. Um, and the RTMP stream would just be available there. So no, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the stream. So when I, when I hit start stream, what happens is 
the uh, this publisher studio starts all the protocol um, uh, actions that that I was talking about on the solidity layer. So right now, uh, as you can see, it requested a stream ID. Uh, the protocol events are being dumped. Um, a stream ID was approved, um, and the stream is now ready. So like the stream ID was approved. So basically, what happened was um, the publisher studio made a request on your behalf on the VideoCon network to get a stream approved. Stream was approved. Um, now, it means that this um, ingest URL is ready to accept an RTMP stream. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to copy this, um, and I've SSHed into Raspberry Pi here. Uh, let me just. Let me boot up the Raspberry Pi so we can access it. And Dev, I'm going to make a quick adjustment to the camera. Okay. Some people want to see. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. like the Raspberry Pi has gone on sleep, so let me just try to get back into it. Okay, so this way you guys know it's real. inside the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, this is my you know, shortcut for um, sending this thing into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, okay. I'm going to do echo. I got the stream. What I'm going to do is now I'd like you to I'd like to call your attention to the screen on my right, which is the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to do cat RTMP address. So this is the RTMP address that I need to ingest into. So I'm going to copy this. Um, and to the left, I have a Raspberry Pi video streaming command constructed already. Um, just to make it easy for you guys to understand. So, by the way, we're going to be writing a blog post on all of these commands, so um, you don't have to worry that if you cannot see these commands on the screen properly. But, you know, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Raspberry Pi command that I just now constructed and run it. There you go. So this is us, me and Jason. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi camera that is, like, covering us. I hope you guys can see it. And immediately, as you can see here, in, uh, this is the most interesting thing about a 360 demo, right? Like, I can sh show you two screens and ask you to look to my left and to my right. So if you look to my left now, um, the protocol events have started coming in. And then the ingest is saying, um, ingest is green, healthy, and the output is green and healthy, which means that uh, the input and output are working fine. And then you can see the protocol events going on in the studio. And what I'm going to do is going to hit play here. And once it starts playing, yeah, let's try this one. Huh. I think it's getting ready. Yeah, you can see it's spinning and it's, it's still getting the HLS stream ready. Let's give it a second and then um, let's see if the stream comes up.
in the meantime, we do have a question from uh, the YouTube chat. Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, as for open source code, what will be open source? How much is going to be open source? What is open source today? Yeah. So we have a we have a plan for it. Um, you know, like as all projects goes, um, we have a lot of IP that we build uh, on the pl on the platform on the product, um, and we have a plan uh, to make. Uh, everything possible open source. Uh, and uh, as you saw from uh, last week's open source demo, we made our uh, uh, command line uh, interface open source. Uh, and then as we progress, we keep making more and more parts of the op uh, project open source. And um, yeah, we're, we're very excited to make um, you know everything that we can open source, open source as soon as we can. All right. So the stream is running, and then I have the HLS stream going on, so. All right, let me, just give me a second, and let me ping our. Looks like I think there's, there's something off with the. Let's restart our Raspberry Pi so that we know uh, we can get back to this one. And as a reminder for those joining our live stream on the Live Planet app and on YouTube, uh, you could drag, you could control the screen, drag around, look around in 360 degree degrees. Uh, we are recording and streaming this on the Live Planet VR camera, so which uh, shoots in 4K. Uh, live streams over the Live Planet VR system. If you're joining us on the live on the YouTube stream, please uh, don't forget to join the chat conversation and ask questions. We'll be addressing uh, viewers' questions at the end of this video. Okay, so now I've created another stream. Um, I'm going to take the RTMP in just URL and then give it to the Raspberry Pi. Two, and then I'll go here, and then okay. So this is a new RTMP in just URL. Um, as you can see, all the domains here say hulk dot and just dot uh, videocoin dot network. So you know internally we are all huge fans of the Avengers, although I've not seen the last movie, so don't spoil it for me yet. Um, so uh, the these are all our internal networks, uh, which obviously, since we're developing it, um, you'll see failures like this and uh, protocol uh, delays like this. But you know, Just 
make sure I'm copying the right one. I go edit, head. All right. Let's see now. Reverse again. And to your left, you can now start to see that the stream is now receiving. Let's see if it's, if we have better luck this time. Looks like the Raspberry Pi is not sending out data because you know, like you see, the FPS is so fast here. Um, it might be because it might be the, you know. yeah, I think the Raspberry Pi is not sending data. That's probably what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from this Raspberry Pi demo and try to stream my. Um, I'm going to try and stream my laptop. So let me get that one. Hold on. Um, in the meantime, let's give this a few more seconds and see if it'll um, come up. If not, I'm gonna switch into our, um, my FaceTime camera and then we can show that. Okay, it works now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah. So this is an H HTTP HLS stream coming in from streams of videocoin.io. So I should also take a minute to explain what happened here. Um, so as you know, um, our, um, uh, as you know, the input that was coming in from the Raspberry Pi needs to go out um, and into the network and. Um, uh, the, the RTMP ingester works on input chunks that come in, and then the input chunks are converted into um, uh, 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 transcodable input chunks, which are basically, you take a chunk, um, take the RTMP stream that's coming in, convert it to a 10 second chunk, and that gets transcoded. So this, RTM, this Raspberry Pi was not sending data back up to our, um, uh, our ingest point that you saw here. So that was what was going on. So like that's why when I played the stream here, um, it was showing up blank uh, because um, the stream was not, um, uh, because the VideoCon network was not getting input stream from the, um, from the Raspberry Pi camera. So now that it is fixed, now that the Raspberry Pi is sending enough data back into the cloud, um, to, into our network, now we can see I've dropped in the stream uh, as you can see that the stream here is stream.videocon.network. Uh, you know that it's directly pulled HTTP bridged out of our network, uh, showing up as an HLS stream, the live stream that is coming up from our um, Raspberry Pi camera. And this is my favorite HLS tool. You know, you can see the real-time statistics on how the buffers are getting filled. And uh, if you remember the quality level, right, like we set um, we set up the quality level to be SD, and then you can see that the same quality levels that you have seen. And then there's no audio on this one, but you can see all the buffers getting full, filled here. Uh, for those of you who understand HLS, um, you know all of these uh, real-time metrics are pretty exciting. Um, and this is just to show you guys that this is actually happening live, as opposed to me um, sending you a, um, a stream that was not live. <laughs> so it is a uh, so it's pretty cool. So like as you can see, um, even though we had a small hiccup because of the Raspberry Pi was not sending data up into a VideoCon network, um, because of this whole thing, now you know that it actually works. So now if I go to the Raspberry Pi back here and kill the stream, so you will immediately see on to your um, left that the stream data has stopped. So let me go kill the stream. Uh, control Z there. And 
and yep, as soon as you as soon as I did that, the uh, video card network interface immediately said that the ingest is inactive. You can see this here, and then the protocol events will now say that the ingest is inactive, and now I can go and complete the stream, and the stream will close itself, and all the protocol activities that that are supposed to happen around this where. Um, we had previously explained, for example, like there's an escrow event where uh, before a stream starts, there's an escrow that happens and then the escrow ends when the stream ends. So all of those um, stream activities are continuing and happens in the background and the stream finishes for us. So this is the very beginning of uh, VideoCoin Publisher Studio. So this is one of the first versions of the studio that we'll make available. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll publish our roadmaps on, on when this tool will be available and when you guys can start using it and then uh, start streaming with the VideoCoin network. Uh, very shortly, we'll be uh, publishing on our media post um, our upcoming roadmap for our, our project. But you know, overall, this is a very exciting time and very exciting milestone for us because um, if you, if you, this is, um, anybody who's using this product can completely forget that they're using uh, um, a cryptocurrency powered, um, a utility token powered, uh, video coin token powered network. So this is, this abstracts out all of the complexities that is involved in doing video streaming. And then this is, you know, as simple as creating a stream on, you know, your favorite uh, video live streaming platform out there. are a bunch of them out there, like for example, Wowza. If you've ever used Wowza, um, it's like, it's, it's as simple as using Wowza. So you can just go create an in input ingest stream, start streaming to that, and then you'll start seeing HLS output, no friction involved. So that is our demo for today. And uh, we're really excited for you to have joined us and then um, we want to thank you for joining us, and then I'll see if there's any questions from the community that I want to hit. Um, actually, all the questions were answered while you were streaming, so um, you've informed everybody on the questions. We're good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so that was our demo, folks. Thanks a lot for joining us, and then uh, we'll see you in the next demo. Okay, thank you. Thank you.